welcome back to part three of Revising Broken Girl. I had actually filmed something on Wednesday, but I ended up never uploading it with one thing and another. My schedule got messed up. And it's okay because we are way further along because on Wednesday I hadn't done more than the first eight chapters. And now I am on, I've doubled that. So um, I've added, we are at 161,000 words, which means I've written about 16 to 17,000 words since I finished the alpha draft. So it's great. Um, chapters 1 through 14 are completely beta processed. They are actually released on my Patreon for my $5 Patreons. Um, and the great thing is, is like, that's the first 14 chapters, but what it is, it's actually the first 12 expand it so like there are two extra chapters in there because i had forgotten that not only did i add a new chapter five but i took my old chapter eight or chapter nine i think and i split it in two so there were five extra chapters in the whole thing <laughs> the prologue's in there um everything is expanded two new songs for the soundtrack i'm putting the soundtrack together on youtube this weekend as part of my promotional stuff um so revising is going better. Um, one of the things that kind of dragged me down for a couple days is I was writing the new scenes for chapter five and then Jason and Elizabeth had a conversation and they did a thing in there that like I couldn't just, I had to change it. And then um, I was doing a lot of thinking about, you know, because one of the things you do in revision is you want to go back and make sure that the themes and the symbols and just like the, the character stuff works. And as much as I didn't want to make this a Jason story, it was, I was hoping to make it more of a Sam story. I'm just, I, and that was like, that's a, that's, an, that's a laudable goal. But Sam's stuff never really interested me as a character. I think I did some interesting things with her here. And I think I left her in a really good place. I'm really happy that I changed my original idea for her. And now she's doing something different. But like at the end of the day, I find Jason to just be a more crunchy character. So I worked on some beats I want to have with him. Basically, there are four important women in his entire life. I mean, other than Courtney, but she's dead in the story, so it doesn't matter. I'm, I mean, the importance of Courtney, let's just not even go there, right? So uh, Robin, Carly, Elizabeth, and Sam are all kind of like big love interests for him. Or Carly, if we please don't give me back Jason. I don't want Jason and Carly again. Like, no, please. So guts, I'm begging you. Um, so... <clears throat> I decided I wanted to have each of those women say like the exact same thing to him, but mean different things because they have different visions of their relationship with Jason and the help that that will help him crystallize the choices he's making. Because at the end of the day, I mean, you know, it just happened that way. And I also wanted to hit a couple of beats with Jason and Elizabeth, just like conversationally, like just things they talk about. I want to come up with it because I want to do, um, in the new chapter five, I added a scene where they have a piece of conversation that I figured out that I could do a three beat with it. And a three beat is something I learned from my guru, Lonnie Diane Rich, which I will link at the bottom if you get tired of listening to me talk about her. <laughs> oh, well, you need to go somewhere else. Um, a three beat is you want to establish it. And then two, I think you reinforce it. And then you three subvert it. Um, and she shows a really great, um, if you've watched Buffy, Doppelgangling, there's a, a scene where Willow is beating a vampire and asking who's your boss. And like, you know, so there's that. If you basically what she does is she punches, she asks him, Who's your boss? And he says, The mayor. And she punches him, Who's your boss? The mayor, punch, and then you. So, like, you subvert it. And so, what I did was, like, I just, I'm having them have, like, the same kind of conversation three different times, but they're going to say different. It's a, you'll see it. I'll point it out when we get there. But it's just one of those things, like, in revision, you start to see patterns in your own writing and you start to see repetitions in the things that they talk about. And, like, you don't want them to repeat themselves. Like, that's one of the things that really frustrates me sometimes about some soap operas, particularly General Hospital at this moment. But Passions used to do this. This is one of the reasons why I started watching Passions when it first came on. Like, I was watching in August and September of 99. But, like, nothing ever happened. Like, the same day would take, like, a month to get through. Like, it just it was just, like, monotony. And I'm like, I'm sure they fixed that as they got forward. But, like, I can't stand stories that stand still. And, like, soap operas, it's like, there's no point for that. If things are, it's like, that's why I like Days of Our Lives a little bit better, because it moves faster. And if characters are going to have the same conversation three times, they need to be having that conversation for different reasons. And so you need to kind of change the reason they're having that conversation. And maybe they're still saying the same things, but they're saying those things for different reasons now. So they don't mean the same thing. So, sorry, my hair is, we're having a day here. I should be getting it cut, but, you know, pandemic. And I don't live with my hairdresser. Be nice. I should have. I should have just said, hey, Kate, bring your baby. Come move here and your husband, and your family, bring them all, and you just move here and cut my hair. Um, <clears throat> so that's like, that's the big thing that's happening in revisions now is I think I'm just, I am ironing out those, the symbolisms and themes I really want to hit. Uh, so we are at chapter 14. I literally just finished the chapter last night and I was going to go on to 15, 
But I was really tired and I wanted to get to bed and get up early so he could get going today. Because I am officially a half hour ahead of schedule. I wasn't supposed to make these till nine, but you know, I got up 20 minutes early. It worked out. Um, today I'm going to try and get through chapters. I'm not, I'm setting kind of like, I'm doing the same thing where I set like a two kind of deadlines for myself. I'm going to set two goals. One is like a soft goal where like it'd be, this is what like I really, really should get to this point. If I don't get to this point by today, we're going to have to start revising. We're, we're going to have to push out the date. I want to get to chapter 17 today. Um, and the reason why it's only like I'm 15, 16, and 17, I'm only setting like a soft goal of three chapters is there are two new scenes in those chapters. And if I can get through all of those and I still have time and in my schedule to keep going, um, 18, 19, and 20 will take less time because they don't have new scenes. And this, those take a little bit less time. And the things that I'm adding are just things that I refer... It's, we are now at the point in the story where I'm not adding new beats, where I'm not adding new things. I am expanding on things that I refer to off screen. So for example... After Elizabeth gets kidnapped by Manny, she ends up at General Hospital, and then Jason comes to see her, but Epiphany sneaks him upstairs. And I thought, well, I want that scene with Jason and Epiphany. I need a, I need a break in that scene right there anyway. I want, like, they need, like, he's had a couple of scenes with Epiphany all along. I kind of want that there where Epiphany gives him a basically, like, she's been through hell, knock it off. Like, that is something that we already know as readers happen because she t he tells her, no, 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 Epiphany st stuck me up. So I sh shouldn't have to do anything really like to change that and then the other one is um in the er where it's a scene i already refer to so i'm just putting it on the page <clears throat> and that is kind of the scenes going forward it's scenes i have already referred to that i had happen off the page but now i want them on the page because i think we need to see those characters doing those things and that's a good that's but that's better to be in than you're not i want to be adding things at this point because adding things does always make me feel like i'm not i should go back and re rewrite the whole thing and like nobody wants to do that <laughs> so we're in good shape on revisions. I'm going to try and get the chapter 20 today. If I'm going to get the chapter 20 today, we're in okay shape because I believe it's chapter 23 and 24 that are brand new and I'm going to write them this weekend. And then there's two more chapters at the back end that I need to add. And then so we, instead of being done the beta draft on Sunday, like I'd hoped, I'll probably be done closer to Wednesday. And that's totally fine because I'm going through and looking through typos now. Um, the beta draft is where I look for typos um, and look for last minute inconsistencies because I think I found most of them. And that's kind of where we are. We're still scheduled for May 5th. I really hope I don't have to push that out. But if we do, we do. You know, it is what it is. All right. Have a great time uh, weekend. Uh, it's Friday. So enjoy yourself. I will see you guys later. Bye.